Hello, hello. Good morning, guys. And welcome back to another episode of As She Eats Food Delivery Vlogs. Apologies, I didn't film a video last week. So uh, I did a post on my YouTube channel informing you guys that uh, there won't be any video. Today is May 1st, which is uh, Labor Day. So it's a public holiday for everyone. And um, the time now is 8.17. I actually went online about 8.05. I went online onto Grab and Deliveroo. Uh, reason being is the previous public holiday. I forgot which one it was. <laughs> but um, we multi-apped on Grab and Deliveroo and it worked really well for us. So I thought, why not just do the same thing and see how it goes. Today, I'm only free up to about 11 a.m. I think the maximum I'll go is 11.30 because I've had an appointment. Yeah, we're really just going to see how it goes. I'm back on my Comex, as you can see. I decided not to take the snap cycle out because uh, I wanted some change. Been riding the snap cycle a lot. And yeah, we are online on Grab and Deliveroo already. And we're just going to see how today go. Oh shit, see, I forgot that when you push your bike, you should uh, turn off your e-bike because when the pedals move forward, the motor kicks in. That's something that I like totally forgot because when you push the snap cycle or the roadmaster forward, even if the pedals move, it needs um, pressure from your feet to activate. So this is our plan for today. We work from like 8 to 11, haven't gotten an order. I did get two orders on Deliveroo, but all were crazy distances. One order was asking me to go from Aukang to Nex and deliver even further down, I think into like Pai Leba or something. So I rejected those. I got another one, which is asking me to go from to Aukang 1 and then all the way up to uh, Upper Serangoon View, which is insanely far. Lah. So I rejected that as well. So yeah, we have to see how things go. And I'll bring you guys back when I get my first order. Alright guys, we got our first order on Grab. <coughs> I'm offline on Deliveroo already. And it's a Grab Mart order. Let's go pick it up. We're at the vendor already. And it appears to be one bottle of um, Bailey's Irish cream. I think it's like maybe an alcohol. I'm not sure. But let's go ahead and pick it up. Da -da -da. The Bailey's the original Irish cream 700 milliliters. Interesting. And uh, for the delivery, we are going into Coven. So I know that like that's not ideal for us, but I was waiting along. I was waiting for an order for quite a while so I'm like yeah even if it's not ideal let's just do it okay not too bad a uh, distance 1.4 km let's jump on the road and I'll talk to you guys a little bit more all right so remember how you guys asked me to like share what's the differences between for example the snap cycle versus a conventional rear hub e-bike I think I'm able to share a little bit more now that I have been on the Roadmaster for quite a few rides and then now I'm jumping back on my Comex. Okay, already I feel like um, getting up to speed, increasing your speed from a stop is a little bit less controlled on the conventional rear hub versus the Roadmaster. And I think the reason for that is really because um, the motor will just speed you up to the respective speed 25 uh, once it feed, senses that you're pedaling and it's not relative to anything means um, okay maybe it's relative to the assist mode that you're on so you know if you're one then you won't increase that quickly if you're two a little bit more if you're on three then that's the fastest right but I do find that it's a little bit less um, controlled even though I've been riding e-bikes for quite some time I tend to prefer the control you get when you're on the Roadmaster, which is a mid-drive motor, right? Because, um... Oh, group order. We'll check that out later. Okay, but I tend to like the mid-drive motor a bit more because... Because although the acceleration still is relative to the power assist mode you're on, 
I feel it's more controlled by how much power you put in through your legs. So when I was on a snap cycle and if I'm going to compare it, the snap cycle allowed me to control exactly when the power kicks in and when the power um, kicks out because I'm controlling it using my legs, right? How much power I put in, the motor will kick in and it'll only kick in when you put in manual power. So honestly, that's something that I like uh, and I find it's a lot more controlled. The rear hub is very jerky. Just now, um, I was starting out from a stop and you know, sometimes it's a little bit tricky. You have to navigate a bit of turns as you just start up and yeah, I just found it was pretty tricky to manage and I think the navigator is bringing me the wrong way. Yeah, it's the condo. Let's go. So yeah, I'm going to talk about a few more differences. Um, basically, just share my thoughts. And we'll see how it goes, but for now, let's go drop this off. Give me this one. Yeah, bro. I think this one is liquor, uh, Bailey's. Yeah, well, love it. Morning breakfast, huh? Shook, man. Uh. <laughs> Holiday mood, ready. Yeah, love. Thank you. Hey, thanks, bro. You know the way, ah? Uh? Yes. Okay, let's see where we're going next. So he wants me to go to Yemi Teochew Fishbowl Noodle at um, Coven. Then over to uh, Pai Li Siang Bihun at Lorong Asu. Deliver in Lorong Asu and then deliver back to Akang Avenue 7. This is paying out $5.20 per order. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that since uh, we're really not getting much orders. So let's head over to uh, Yemi Teochew Fishbowl Noodle, pick up the few orders. Two orders to pick up is a double and we'll go from there. Alright, so I'll see you guys at the uh, store. Catch you in a bit. Auntie, or your grab Ling San Si. Okay guys, first order picked up, we're going to get it packed, quite a big order if you ask me, but all good, clip it up. The customer ordered 4 bowls of laksa, not a bad choice for breakfast if you ask me. <laughs> now we need to head over to Lorong Asu 134 and it looks like it's going to be a 1.7 km journey. And the good thing is uh, one of the drop offs is actually right beside the uh not right beside right opposite the shop that we're going to go to to collect this uh second order of the double okay let's be on our way all right and let's continue talking about the differences that i feel now that I'm back on my uh, Comex, which is a rear hub motor, um, I talked about the control when you're accelerating. I want to talk about the riding position as well. Now, um, I know for the snap cycle, I commented that it's a little bit hard to be on the Roadmaster because of the position you're leaning over your handlebars a lot. And now that I'm back on my Comex, um, I would say I prefer the Comex in terms of riding position because you're more upright, you're more stable and it's more comfortable to ride in. But for the Roadmaster, you can solve that problem by buying a handlebar riser. Um, there are even some that you can adjust the angle of where the handlebar actually sits. So if you are planning to get the Roadmaster, I think a handlebar riser is a definite upgrade because you don't want to be leaning over your handlebars too much. Especially if you are a full-time rider and you work like eight to nine hours or maybe even 12 hours a day. So that's uh, definitely something to take into consideration. Okay, the next point I'm gonna chat with you about is uh, actually the pickup and the pickup speed of the Roadmaster versus my Comex. So my Comex, I'm right now riding on mode 2 and the pickup was probably faster than mode 1 uh, and it is the ideal 
how to say a power assist mode I want to be at. The pickup, once you get going, is pretty smooth and uh, you will find yourself accelerating up to 25 uh, pretty smoothly and uh, with a lot of ease. I want to compare that to the Roadmaster, right? The Roadmaster, on the other hand, is um, has a geared system. So you have uh, seven speed gears. And then, it's not only relative to the gears, it's relative to the uh, power assist mode that you have put on, as well as how much power you're putting in through your legs. So one thing I find is that uh, it's not as simple as it seems. For the Roadmaster, if you're on a high gear, and you start out from a dead stop, you're going to have to put in a lot of manual power to get the e-bike going. And uh, of course, this is as per a normal bicycle as well, right? If you're in a high gear and you start out from a stop, it's going to be tougher to get your e-bike or bicycle going. So what I found was that you need to shift down to a much lower gear and then shift up as you accelerate it. But the thing with the Snap Cycle Roadmaster is the acceleration is so quick that you are basically, let's say I'm shifting to a lower gear, okay, I start pedaling and my first finger is just basically toggling and pushing the gear up as I go along. And this is because the Snap Cycle's acceleration, the Roadmaster's acceleration is uh, so good and so quick and so powerful. So there are a couple of differences here and there, right, between uh, traditional rear hub and uh, the Snap Cycle's mid-drive motor. I think it's all just a matter of getting used to. I think that for me, if I were to go back to this uh, rear hub and just continue using it, I think I'll get used to it. I'll learn again how to control the e-bike when it starts. Um, the little nuances that are, are unique to the Comex, right? So yeah, I, I don't think it's any big issue at all. It's just um, a matter of getting used to. But yeah, I'm just sharing my thoughts on uh, the differences between the rear hub and a mid-drive. And then you guys can take that for your own learning. Or, you know, if you're considering buying an e-bike, you know, maybe this will help. Okay, I'm going to leave my e-bike at the side here and just run in and pick up the order. Alright, very nice. Order was ready. Let's go back. Okay, looks good to me. Let's go. We are going to 172 Alkang Avenue 1, which is only 730 meters away. Let's go. Oh wow. It's within this same car park. Lovely. Eh? What the? I'm so blur. We are going to 172, not 137. What am I thinking? Oh my god. This just shows what happens when you have been away from deliveries for too long. <laughs> okay, let's go, let's go. See you guys at the customer. Okay, dropping off the Laksa order. Let's go. Okay, I feel kind of bad for moving the shoes, but I don't want to put the food on the floor. So, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. Deliver it. Okay. Now, we have to go all the way to Riverfront Residences, which is at Alkang Avenue 7. It's going to be quite a ride, but uh, I think all good. We're happy to be doing all this. Uh, 2.7km journey. I'll catch you guys when I'm reaching the customer. Alright guys, we have finally reached Riverfront Residences and oh, they didn't put a unit number, hmm, interesting. Let's go see how this works out. This is not first time coming here? Nope, but the customer never give me unit number. To either call them or message them. Yeah, well. We'd like to deposit a message, press 1 to end the call. We'd like to 
Oh, can you let me go to the lobby? Yeah, uh? I put the food at the. You but know the. Yeah, so I put it there, then I go already. I take the picture, meeting, I send them. Yeah, put on the floor, lor. You know the 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 thing you need to press to call up. No. I put there, uh. If not, ah, uh, I put here. They don't know. Maybe come here. I throw away also wasted. I call one more time. Uh. Still never pick up, lah. Uh. I go put at the block there, lah. Uh. Okay, guys. As you guys heard, uh, customer didn't give unit number. Uh, called message, called many times, and then I read the uh, instructions from Grab. So. Let me just review that one more time. Help center, customer not available to collect the food. Call at least three times. Wait for at least five minutes after the call or chat at them. I did both. Cash booking, contact. This is not cash, it's paid online. Cashless, take photo of your attempted calls. Leave food in a safe place. Take photo of where the food was left. Send this via chat to the customer. If there's no place, dispose. Okay, mark delivery is complete. Okay, Ken, I know what to do. I'm going to put it here. Okay, take a photo, send it to them via chat. Your food is left here. Send. So I send call at 9.26, now it's 9.36, so I've waited 10 minutes. I'll put arrived and delivered. Yeah, not much else I can do. Okay, we did get another order while we were trying to sort out this debacle, which is collecting from, which is collecting from Assam Tree at Gangkamo. That's one order. Then Long John Silver's at Aukang Mall. That is uh, two orders delivering into Avenue 10, Riverville Drive, and Compassville Lane. Thank you, Uncle. Okay. So we've been assigned three new orders, which I think we're going to complete. I'll see you guys at uh, Kangka Mall and then Aukang Mall. Alright, see you guys there. Uh, Grab Food 130. Thank you. Okay, now that I see where Assam Tree was located, I think I could have parked at my normal place behind Aukang Mall. And then I walked here to pick it up because now I have to go back to my bike where I left it. And then uh, ride a little bit more to reach the back of Aukang Mall. But all good, all good now I know. Next stop we're going to is Long John Silver's. And we have a double order to pick up, so this is actually a triple stack. So yeah, see you guys at Long John Silver's. Okay guys, as you can see, I am empty handed and if you review the footage, there were like so many riders at Long John Silver's and I could just tell that I'll be waiting over like half an hour or more for those. So because I don't really do grab nowadays, I went ahead and cancelled those orders. I'm offline as well. Uh, I think I want to see if Deliveroo can give me a few more. If not, after delivering this order, I'm going to call it a day. I don't know guys, it wasn't as, um, how to say, busy as I would expect it to be. Maybe also because uh, the timing that I'm coming out to work, maybe it's a bit too early, I don't know. Because the previous time we did from like 9 or 10 in the morning 
till two something in the afternoon and we did so well it's really good uh, earnings today mm, I don't feel like we are doing well but it's okay we're just gonna deliver the ayam asam tree I think from Kangkamo it's just down the road Avenue 10 and then uh, I'm still online with Deliveroo they hasn't given me anything yet but yeah hopefully this video can be a bit shorter <laughs> Um, I'll see how I edit it. Um, I'm feeling okay. I don't feel bad or anything that I cancel the orders or that I'm gonna cut short my shift. It's only like an hour more so at most you can squeeze in what two three orders. I just feel not so busy today. The vibes weren't as good. I mean this is very much a uh, just a side hustle. Just a part-time gig work and um, my second gig job which I think I'll share with you guys soon but my second gig job right it's been giving me quite substantial income over the past few months not months lah, one and a half months maybe so in terms of earnings and supplementing my income I'm quite comfortable at the moment which is also part of the reason why I don't really feel like how to say I don't feel too bad if I'm feeling lazy or don't have the motivation to go and uh, do a delivery shift so yeah, I mean, there were, you know, people like Grab Avengers, he's also transitioning to another stage in his career, he's gonna pursue different things, so he also has stopped delivering for the time being. So yeah, at times like this, um, where we're at a crossroads, I would say it's a crossroads in our lives. But uh, yeah, we really just have to see what life shows at us, take it one step at a time. Thank you. Okay, order delivered. And we've gotten a new order on Deliveroo. Coffee bean going to Aukang Avenue 2. Some items need proof of age. Salted caramel lard latte hot regular needs proof of age. Are you mad? Okay, we have accepted that order. We're gonna go back to Aukang Mall and pick up the uh, coffee bean. I think I'll be offline on Grab for now and uh, see what we get. So I'll catch you guys at Coffee Bean. Uh, I have Deliveroo 9952. I am not in the mood for waiting today. <laughs> I cancelled a coffee bean order after setting a timer for 5 minutes. Basically we went there, we saw they were short staff. Uh, then the guy said it will take a while because the food is being prepared or whatever, blah blah blah. Set a timer for 5 minutes and promptly cancelled once the timer was up. So right now we're heading home. I know this video will probably be shorter because uh, we didn't work as long. Ironically, I would say I still enjoyed today's shift even though it's like 2 hours only and we only earn like $20.50. Yeah, $20.50 for 4 orders on Grab. Um, so actually the first order came in around 8.30 I think. So by right we're only like actively working for 2 hours so that's giving me like what? 10 dollars 25 cents per, per hour and if we're being honest with ourselves that really isn't the rate that we want to be at we'll like to be at a little bit of a higher rate maybe uh 20 22 per hour that's okay though like i said i have my second gig hustle to supplement my income so i'm not too worried i really just want to get out here and enjoy a little i still enjoy myself even though the earnings were a bit terrible it is what it is uh yeah for this Possibly the shortest shift I've ever done in the history of shifts. It is what it is guys. I'm gonna go back uh, We're gonna use this time to rest relax and then I have an appointment later in the afternoon. So uh, Yeah, hope you enjoy Labor Day. I think this video just shows that not every single time you go out on a delivery shift It's gonna be great. You're gonna earn a lot. I think there'll be days where it isn't so good and maybe for myself For this shift, we didn't pick the right timing. I went out at 8 a.m. Now it's 10.30 uh, So yeah, maybe there are different factors at play That um, maybe I didn't consider or something But yeah, hope you enjoyed this video anyways I know I enjoyed uh, coming out and delivering, filming it So yeah, see you in the next one guys, peace!